to be leader of the Labour Party. Trafalgar Square, as ever, looks brilliant and looks great because everyone who's taken part in this democratic discussion and debate about the future of the defence of this country has a right to be heard, a right to be on the streets and a right to make their voice known before any crucial de decision is taken. I first joined the campaign for nuclear disarmament when I was 16 years old, and I'm still a member, only a short time later. <laughs> CND and the wider peace movement play an absolutely vital role in our society. They speak up for peace, speak up for justice, speak up for human rights, and whilst many of our media will never give any of you the credit for it, actually have an enormous effect on the politics of this country. I remember the vote on Syria. I remember the demonstrations over the Iraq war and many, many others. We begin to change that whole narrative. Too often the debate on nuclear weapons is presented as a cynical set of alternatives that are put forward. X says this, Y says that, Z has an interest in this, B says something else. I think we should just consider for a moment what a nuclear weapon actually is. It is a weapon of mass destruction. In, if ever used, it can only kill large numbers of civilians. They've only once been used in war, and that was in Japan in 1945, and we still see the consequences in the cancers and the destruction and the horror of very old people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They were used in testing in the Pacific and other places. The victims in the Marshall Islands are still living with the consequences of those tests, as indeed are people in Australia, the United States, and Russia, and many, many other places. And the now very elderly nuclear test veterans are also paying the price for those nuclear tests in the 1950s, when they were used as guinea pigs while nuclear explosions took place. Sometimes today's generation of politicians all around the world have grown up in what they think is a post-Cold War age and think that nuclear weapons are no longer something that is a matter they deal with day to day. I have the honour of attending the Humanitarian Effects of War conference held in Vienna. I was part of a British peace delegation and I'm pleased to say at that conference the British and American governments were represented. We were told in the most graphic detail possible by scientists, by nuclear experts, two things. One is how a nuclear weapon explodes and secondly what the effects are. The immediate environmental effect, the immediate destruction, the immediate problems of the fallout the slightly later ecological disaster that follows, the economic impact that follows, the food supply impact that follows from one nuclear explosion in one place, in one spot on our globe. It would have global effects. If a nuclear war took place, there would be mass destruction on both sides absolute mass destruction on both sides of the conflict that took place. I think everyone who is about to make a decision on what we do about our nuclear weapons should think about the humanitarian effects on wholly innocent people anywhere across this globe if they're ever used. Britain 
is a signatory to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. That treaty came about because in part of the work of the Labour government from 1964 to 1970. And before I came here today, I was reading the words of the 1964 election manifesto of the Labour Party, which wanted to not renew nuclear weapons and wanted to bring about a different world. Not all of that was achieved, but the NPT, the Non-Proliferation Treaty, was. It has worked in many ways. Those countries that did not have nuclear weapons, for the vast majority, have not taken possession of them. Whole parts of our globe have become nuclear weapons free zones, Latin America and Africa, for example, as well as Central Asia. It's a credit to the leaders of all those countries on both those continents that that was possible and that was brought about to the South Africans, Argentinians, Brazilians and many others. They have to be commended for that. And I've attended numerous NPT conferences, the last in New York in May. The Non-Proliferation Treaty has a requirement on the five declared nuclear weapons states to take steps towards disarmament as it does on the, I think, 187 other states not to possess them. It is a very precious thing. And I want to see a Labour government that will adhere to all of the articles of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. And so a decision is about to be made. We're not quite sure when. That's a matter for the Prime Minister to decide on whether or not Britain should renew the Trident nuclear missile system. As you know, I stood for election for leader of the Labour Party in a dramatic summer of meetings and activities. And I put forward, not me, a lot of other people, it was a we rather than me style of campaign that we, we ran. And point six of the ten points I put forward was, if elected leader, I would seek to be replacing Trident not with a generation of nuclear weapons, but jobs that retain the community's skills. And I'm very serious about this point. Very serious indeed. I don't want us to replace Trident. Everybody knows that. Many of the British public don't want to replace Trident. I hope there'll be more and more of them who don't want to replace Trident. But that's not a reason to make whole swathes of industry re uh, redundant or jobs be lost. It's every reason to invest in those towns, those cities, those economies and those skills. So those skills are not lost. They're still working, making aircraft, making ships, making all the things and the high technology that goes with it, they're brilliant at. See this as an opportunity for the regeneration of high-tech industries in Britain, not the destruction of them. We can indeed achieve something very much better as a result of I would, what I would hope would be a positive decision that we don't spend £100 billion on the replacement of the whole Trident system and the submarines and the 25-year life, lifespan that they would have. I would like to see those resources invested primarily in ensuring we have good quality industry behind us and after that on the dividend we get from peace. We live in a world where so many things are possible, where peace is possible in so many ways and so many places. You achieve peace through democracy, through respect for human rights, through ending inequality, through sharing resources. You don't achieve peace by planning for war and grabbing each other's resources and not respecting each other's human rights. And so how we do these things is very important. I asked Emily Thornbury to become our Shadow Defence Secretary. And I said to Emily, 
What I want you to do, the first thing I want you to do, and she did it very quickly, straight away, was prepare a document in which there can be the widest possible consultation on the defence and security issues, but above all, include the Trident missile system within that discussion. Politics has to be open, and politics has to be an inclusive process. Openness and inclusion are surely what we are strong about, what we are good about, and what brings about real political change. So I want all of you to make your voice heard, put your views forward, put your ideas forward, put your suggestions forward, so that there is a um, growth a momentum of that support that shows exactly what we think about nuclear weapons and the way forward. That is how we achieve that change. That is how we achieve political change within this country and in the wider world. We are not alone. There are many people around the world that have stood up to be counted, who have wanted a non-nuclear future for their country and their planet. Some have suffered grievously as a result of that. Many of us have marched for many years and met for many years with the view that we bring about a peaceful world by arguing peacefully for it, putting forward the logical alternatives and showing to people the horror of war and the total horror of nuclear weapons should they ever be used by anybody. Today's demonstration is an expression of many people's public opinion and many people's views. A lot of people said, well, maybe it's utterly irrelevant, maybe you shouldn't really be there. I want to be here because of my belief in a nuclear-free future. Because I believe that the result we achieved in that dramatic election last year was about reaching out of a different kind of politics in a different kind of world. A world that emphasises dealing with the crying needs of the poor and homeless in this country. Those that are going short and suffering public spending cuts in this country, but also a globe in which we address the grotesque levels of inequality across this planet. We solve those by together sharing and working together. We have a serious process of looking after each other by that means. Thank you for coming to today's demonstration. Thank you for showing that you care. And thank you for wanting a peaceful future for this country and the rest of the world. Thank you.